Welcome to TLC for the Soul podcast, where soul meets spirit. You have entered into sacred space. I'm your host, Tammy Lynn Chambers, and I'm here to help you shine. Now let's get going on this podcast journey. Hello, everyone. Hello, and welcome back to the podcast. This is our special workshop for February to go along with our self-love, self-care theme for the month. This is the first of a three-part workshop. I said we would do something about preparing for union, and that is exactly what we're going to be doing here. Um, And before we get into the workshop, as you've seen from the title, we will be working Um, with Avalon, Um, we'll be working with Merlin, surprise, (laughs) we'll be working, continuing to work with the Mist Vamp, and so, and we'll be doing some light language healing. So this workshop is titled for the Divine Feminine, but there's a Divine Feminine in all of us, so this workshop is for everyone. It's for starseeds, it's for Divine Counterparts, it's for divine masculines and divine feminines, okay? So just to be clear, like every, any, anyone that's listening can benefit from what we're going to be doing here today. So let's just get ourselves into sacred space. I will share with you uh, the totems that I'm working with for this episode. We will read from the um, second part of the Mist Vamp story with Jenna Lee, where she ended off in Glastonbury at the tour. So if you haven't heard the February energy update, you don't have to hear it to do this workshop, um, but it's probably um, a good adjunct to go back and listen to that so you're clear on the themes for the month. If you're following this podcast chronologically, um, everything that I'm doing this month builds on top of each other. So they can be standalone episodes, but to get the most benefit, it's kind of good to kind of like do everything as it um, comes out. Or, you know, they're interchangeable in a sense. Like they don't have to be done chronologically, but everything for the month is kind of a packet of um, teachings and healings for that specific topic of the month. So let's take a deep breath. And as we always say here on the podcast, first of all, thank you for joining me. If you are new, um, welcome. That's our, that's our mascot. Um, That's my dog. Whenever she barks, (laughs) there's, there's a myriad of meanings. So everything that happens in the podcast circle is part of the podcast circle. So I will point those things out if they feel like they have merit or meaning to what we're doing. If you're a returning listener, thank you again for joining me in this space. I'm excited to be building this community here with you. And the podcast now is available like all over the place. Um, we are we just got onto Audible, and soon we will be on iHeartRadio. So I'm excited for that to be coming out, and we will bring in even more of our community there. And then. Um, if you're listening to this as a podcast, we're also available on YouTube, also as TLC for the Soul. So right now, I'm going to wrap us all in love and light and light love. Invite in my guides and your guides if you'd like to work with them during this episode. You choose your listening experience. If you're new here, you may just want to listen and you know, at a high level, see if this community and this work that I do is something that you resonate with. Um, Others of you, you know the drill. (laughs) You can um, listen for the deeper meetings and metaphors and um, the stories and the teachings that are coming out because everything is channeled. Um, We work with source and the creator through the spirit guides that come through and work with me channeled all down the line and through me the conduit to you and if you want to choose an even deeper listening experience you can invite in your own spirit guides and ask them to help you better understand what may be coming up for you personally as you listen to the teachings and receive the healing from um, what we'll be doing here today First of all, I'm going to light us a candle. 
This is just a, this candle actually is dedic was dedicated. It sits on my Imolk altar right now, my altar that's dedicated to Brigid and the Divine Feminine. And this altar is also dedicated to Earth Magic. So we're going to light this little white pillar candle. The totems that have chosen to show up for this workshop series are owls. I have an owl feather here with me. And the stag. And so I have a stag horn, um, ant horn. I keep saying horn. Stag antlers. So naturally shed stag antlers here with there. It's a three pronged. I love it. It's a power of three. It's a three pronged antler. <laughs> And then just in case I need extra, sometimes I like the cards just to help me keep focused. I have brought a card deck and I always forget the name. So I just pulled the box and the book out so I would, wouldn't forget because I do use these a lot. Um, Believe in Your Own Magic by Amanda Lovelace. So I do have that deck as well. All right, let's take a deep breath. So the first thing I want to do is just um, do a just a quick couple second review of what happened in the February energy update with the mist vamp. That is the overarching spirit guide that has come through. Um, he came through as part of a series that I started writing called the spirit guides of Tessa Locke. And he is working with us and Jenna Lee um, in the February energy update. She was surrounded by the mist vamp and she climbed kind of un not unwittingly but she just felt compelled to lean work and climb up to the Glastonbury tour and there was kind of wind all around her and um, she just felt like she needed to lay down and then when she did that she went into like a dream state and the mist Part of the role of the mist vamp as a guide is just kind of to shield and protect you in this comforting, comfy blanket of mist. Um, and we talked about how that relates. And so we, as we go into this first workshop episode, um, the mist vamp shows up again. And so uh, I channeled a second chapter of this story, and this is going to lead us into the key points and the key teachings for this episode for the Divine Feminine, which is, oh my gosh, what was it? Power, <laughs> your power, your purification, and your shadow self. And so we'll be working with all of those. Why are we saying purification? We said another word earlier, but that's okay. And this all has to do with tying it all into the self-love of the month of February. So let me go ahead and read chapter two, which is called Tessa Locke. As Jenna dreamed, her form began to take shape in an astral realm far above her own world. She didn't know this place, and her astral body quivered at the feeling of it, the possibility that lie within the space here. She wanted to explore, to know more. She wanted her freedom, and so she stepped down into the space and waited. Suddenly, before her eyes, a new dawn formed, light and shadow intertwined and she saw the outline of a lake large and heavily shrouded in mist the vamp transformed again she waited as a barge of sorts with wispy boatsmen pulled alongside the shore they beckoned her into the boat she again felt ready to explore but just as her foot set inside the barge, she trembled. What if she didn't like this space? She remembered that she was in control and set her foot firmly inside the barge, moving to take a seat. The oarsmen set off, pushing against the shore and moving the barge swiftly along the waves coming up around the boat. 
Jenna shivered and willed herself a cape. The mist thickened, and the barge edged up against the skirts of fog and light rain. The bargeman looked at her knowingly, yet Jenna didn't understand. Not yet, anyway. She sat there, wondering what was required of her. Then the vamp transformed around her, whispering in her left ear that it was her power, her light that was needed now. She felt the fog tap at her mind. A door opened and she peeked inside. The ancient ways gathered around her. She felt power coming from her hands as she lifted them. Ancient words and symbols flowed from her lips and through her hands, and in the saying and praying, the mists parted. The job done, the barge entered silently through the portal door, and Jenna wondered what the heck she had just done. The barge settled silently against the shore, and a hooded figure, staff in hand, waited for her to disembark. What took you so long? The other man, the, um, the older man's gruff voice asked of her. She didn't know how to answer, so she just bowed her head. Well, let's get on with it, girl, the Merlin invoked. And as Jenna followed, she could feel the transformation start. Ah, so much going on there. It's so good. My God, there's so much going on there. Okay. <laughs> So let me just, and it's, it's the power, the light, which I guess they're calling the purification and the shadow is where we're focusing. And I would have to say on the divine feminine side, so just some background on why we're, we're in Avalon. So I work through Avalon with Merlin and the bringers of the light, and we've been bringing more of the feminine energy here. Um, I've said this I know, multiple places and times um, that this part of the Archangel Michael ley line and that whole area that in, is around that ley line, so it's kind of from Avalon all the way down to the Giza pyramids um, and branches out in little like um, branches or dragon lines from there as it goes. And that is all being called the new Lemuria. So typically when we think of Lemuria, we think of the ancient lands of Mu over in the Hawaiian Islands area. And they, that still is the very ancient um, place where many of us have shared many lifetimes um, together, a lot of us. But as the new golden age comes in, um, some of those places are shifting in a sense. And the USA is being called the New Atlantis. I've said this before. I'm like, okay, that's nice. <laughs> can, you give me, can we get me quickly to the New Lemuria? And um, so that is why much of this work now is being done out of Avalon. Now, Jenna could be any of you. You don't have to be a man or a woman. It just could be the feminine part of yourself your emotions, the watery aspects of you, your intuition, your third eye. And I did not know this, but they're also calling, I didn't realize it was, someone brought it up, that your sacral chakra is also considered a water, um, a water chakra, a water element, right? So that was new to me. So in this, I guess we're kind of working with the sacral chakra, um, the emotional centers of the body, um, anything that has to do with the feminine side of you, because everyone has a feminine part and everyone has masculine part. The power is very interesting to me when we're talking about our power as a, as a divine feminine or with a feminine within you, what is your power? What does that mean? How do you bring your own secret sauce, per se? Because it's a little bit different for everyone. What is that power within you? 
Is that your purpose? Is that your mission? Is that just your ability to, um, you know, take care of things in your daily life and do it with your own unique flair? But first you have to realize that it's there. So for Jenna, like she wasn't even sure that it was there. Um, she got into the boat and she, the boat came, like the barge pulled up. She's like, this is kind of interesting. Um, and then she kind of put her foot in, like, I'm going to take this leap of faith. <laughs> I'm going to get on this new, this new beginning, this, this barge is taking me somewhere, but she stopped like, what if? And I do find that coming up a lot, um, this month. So this is a timeless teaching, but just already this month, I've heard a lot of people in different places saying, you know, this, this, this is great. Whatever this relationship is great. This new career, this new, whatever the new opportunity is coming your way is really great. But what if I heard somebody earlier would be like, what if this happens and that happens and that happens. And so Jenna was doing the th same thing, like kind of doubting her own power as the magician by kind of putting, um, like the what if scenarios kind of bring the, uh, the vibe down on your manifestations a little bit because it brings in doubt and it brings in fear. And I don't, I, I don't want to say like, don't do what ifs. But when I put, <laughs> oh, maybe the dog is saying, don't do what ifs. Because when I put some what ifs around um, some of my manifestations that I'm working on, I went straight to fear. I was like, holy crap. What if I can't do this? What if this other thing that I, it doesn't happen? Like, what if, what if, what if? And then I was like, whoa, stop. You are the co-creator of your life. So I had to go into, I had to remember my light and my power. And it was so interesting. So Jenna's in the boat and it starts getting cold. And then she kind of remembers and she creates a cape for herself in this astral realm. And, I, and so we have to remember our own power, which is we are the co-creator. And this goes back to February um, energy update where it was kind of like, um, and my energetic, little energetic, like tough love kind of thing where it's like, okay, things just don't happen on their own. You have to find the power within to um, make that move or take that step or make that phone call or I don't know, get that, <laughs> whatever, get that something that you need to do. So you have things that you want in your life, be them small or be them big. You get downloads via your divine feminine. They come in through your divine feminine aspect of yourself. So if that's your intuition, um, your third eye, um, your, and your water, you know, your watery elements, the passion in your sacral chakra. So you get a download, you get, so you, you have an overall, you have a thing you want to accomplish. Your guides are going to start helping you. Source is going to start helping you. The angels are going to start helping you by giving you ideas or sending you a person or sending you, you know, messages in various ways. Everybody receives messages differently. It could be um, through music. It could be through something you read. It could be a YouTube video that pops up in your feed. But all of us get messages from, so you have to be aware of, of them. You have to be paying attention to receive them. And so part of being in this new earth now is slowing down enough to be able to notice these things. Um, not multitasking, uh, because you will just easily overlook, bypass, swipe away on your phone um, messages that are meant for you. So always, and, I, and believe me, I do not like to hear this either. Like I am like a like go-getter. Like if I if there's a manifestation, I'm like let's get it done, let's do it now. And that's why some of these bigger ones that are outside of my control, it's so frustrating. But we have to go slow because we are being led there a puzzle piece at a time, a step at a time, a day at a time. Some of these things don't happen overnight. Some of them take time. 
And so we can go into this doubt. Well, it hasn't happened yet, so maybe it's not going to happen. What if um, this other person involved just decides that they don't want this to happen? And it's like a way will always be made for you. Source will always make a way for you. And if something's been taken from you, it will be replaced with something that is more in alignment with who you are now. So we have to always focus on continuing to evolve, to heal. And healing never stops. I mean, this morning I woke up and I was like, man, I'm feeling kind of crappy today. I really was not feeling like just kind of down in the dumps. I was kind of like upset about something that happened um, yesterday, kind of had a little tower moment yesterday. And I was like, that really kind of put me in a funk. And if you're super sensitive and empathic, those kind of things weigh on you. And even little things, um, I, I was reading somebody else's um, blog post about being a highly sensitive person. And I'm like, yes, that's exactly me. Like someone could blow the horn at me at an intersection. This happened one time. Someone blew the horn at me in an intersection. I was riding my bicycle and someone blew the horn because they thought I was in the way and they pulled up alongside me and they kind of made this gruff gesture and then they like whipped around me in their car. And I mean, it took me like a week to get over that, even though I kept releasing it. Like, why does this keep coming up? Why, why is this triggering? I don't know. It was just, it like really like was like, it, it was just weird. I can't explain it, but that's so those kind of things can weigh on you, but you have to find a way to overcome them and get back into your power. And this morning I drew the sun card and it's like, okay, what are the things that help me get back in my power? Um, what are the things that help me feel like a warrior spirit? And yes, this situation kind of was not ideal. Um, and actually it was ideal in a sense because I had to um, stand up for my beliefs and what I believe in and um, let some things go from my reality that were not from my best and highest good. And um, in a sense, I felt bad about doing it, but in another sense, I was like, no, I have to like think of my own self first in certain circumstances and let myself be a doormat. Um, and so I drew the sun card. I was like, okay, I need, what are the things that make me feel good? I need to get outside in the sun. It's really beautiful weather today. I need to um, listen to some of my favorite way showers um, because some of them really activate and motivate me to keep going. Um, I need to, you know, exercise. I did some yoga and some Tai Chi. So just, I'm not, wasn't forgetting about it. You know, I kept releasing it like, and I asked for support. So you have to ask your guides for support, your angels. We don't have to, but they are there to support you. And if you truly are here listening to this episode, then I'm making the assumption that you want to do the work um, and that you are here to heal and move forward in your life and that you are, you know, wanting, wanting to continue to grow spiritually because that's what this podcast is all about. This is about doing the work. This is not about, you know, Continuing to stay stuck in a rut and thinking that somebody else is going to do the work for you because they're not. It's up to you. That's your power. That's that's why that's why you're here. Your light. We talked about this before, too. I think your light is here for the re a reason. Your soul signature, your soul mission, your soul purpose, um, your energetic blueprint was put in a specific geographical location for a reason and then you may move around as things shift and change but you're here for your soul mission and your soul purpose and part of that is continuing to grow as a soul and as a spiritual being of light do we have down days quote unquote the shadow here we said we were talking about the shadow the power and the light yeah we have down days but there are plenty of resources to help you get out of those down days. Um, and, you know, we all have them. Like I said, I just had this morning. I was like, no, oh, dang it. Maybe I'll just. And then you can go into this. Well, like maybe I'll just self sab in a sense, self sabotage, because there is a point for um, I think I saw this in a card I pulled one time. It's like, are you resting or are you retreating? Um, but it's more like, OK, do I really need to rest? Am I tired? Because in this new earth now, 
there's a very good, there's a balance. You're not supposed to be go, go, go all the time. That's why it's slow and steady wins the race. It's like you work a little bit and you may get into a, your rhythm of your day. Like, okay, some people it's the mornings. They, they are more um, activated and their afternoons are when they feel like they need to rest more. And some others, it's the opposite. But there's a rhythm and a flow and you get into that. And this morning I was like, oh, I'm going to just sit on the couch all day and watch Netflix and YouTube. I'm like, and YouTube. And I'm like, no, no, no. That's what I do when I'm kind of like, when I'm asked by spirit to go within or when my higher self is like, you need to like slow down and go into the cave. Those are the times when I really need to recharge and I can just sit there and kind of do nothing. But I've, you know, if you, if you did your, um, your planning for February if you did any type of um, journaling or like I get my calendar and I plot out all the astrological stuff that's happening and because I need to talk to you guys about it. So I go pretty deep in what's going on there um, and you know all the moon phases and everything and I look at all of that and I try to like plan my month out just by goals. I don't go down deep because for me I like to put a schedule to stuff, too much of a schedule to stuff that doesn't work. But already I'm getting into, Spirit's helping me get into a rhythm of if I can do a podcast on one day, then I need the next day to kind of do something different um, and, and do writing or whatever. But find your own rhythm because we were coming into in the Northern Hemisphere, you know, we just had Imol, the first inklings of spring and momentum is picking up and you're going to start to be able to do more than you did the past couple of months when we were in you know, the winter solstice and we slowed down and we went within and we were supposed to go into the cave a little bit more. So now your power, you, you may find your power coming back. The sun may be out more and everybody needs sunlight, a good healthy dose of sunlight. Even if you're taking vitamin D supplements, I, you still need to get out there and get in the sun. Um, sun gazing. If you have not practiced sun gazing, um, that is where we get many, many light codes and downloads through Solaris, the sun. And if you can practice sun gazing and just start with like the way, the way I started, I didn't even know I was sun gazing. I just felt compelled to like look at the sun. Like I said, I actually started looking at it through like tree limbs and tree branches, just like a second or two at a time. And then the next time, like two or three seconds at a time until now, um, if it's not high in the sky, the best time to do this is like you know, morning and evening before the sun goes down, not when the sun is like at its zenith at the top, uh, but when it's at its strongest, because that really can like hurt your eyes too much. But now, I mean, I can just go out and look straight at the sun for like minutes at a time and not look, you know, not look away um, and getting a lot of downloads through Solaris. So that's the light. That's the power. Those are the things that lift you up and keep you going. The other thing, you know, is having a clear and balanced energetic field, whether you're divine masculine or divine feminine. Um, you know, what are your spiritual practices? And if you are inspired to bring in something new or different to change things up a bit, just set that intention and your guides, your angels, they'll start delivering those things to you. Um, a book to read or a magazine you might see in the store. Or I don't know. <laughs> you know, It's always in my feed because I hardly ever go anywhere. But like in your YouTube feed or your social media, like something will pop up. Um, the other day, something came across my email and I was like, whoa, what's this? You know, some something that I thought was junk email ended up being something really good that I needed to take a look at. So I'm going to pull a card for us and then we're going to do some light language healing. And as we leave Jenna, um, she's in the hands of the Merlin and he can be a pretty, <laughs> how do I describe him? Um, Merlin is a taskmaster. So if you want to work with Merlin, like be prepared to get to do some work. Although, he's like, <laughs> um, yeah. So um, this is for those of you that want to be um grid keepers or gatekeepers or work with new earth. So do some earth magic work and work through Avalon and work with Merlin. Um, yeah, he's, 
the bringers of the light are, have sacred spaces, the sacred spaces all over the planet. And so Avalon is like calling its priestesses home and its priests, <laughs> its divine masculines and its divine feminines home. And our next episode is going to be for the divine masculine and will be focused on um, the tour and working with Uther Pendragon. So let me just draw a card to see. And then we're going to do some light language. So hold on. Shuffle. Let's see what did we most need to know for our feminine, our divine feminine. And the card we got is potion. It's called Remember to Practice Self Love. Here we go. <laughs> this is just what we were talking about. Um, it's a girl sitting cross-legged on the floor of her bedroom. She's surrounded by pink, pink, everything, a lot of pink on her bedspread and her carpeting and everything that's in front of her. She's holding some jars of potions, I guess, and she's making stuff in a little cauldron, and she's got a little um, witch's hat on the bedside table and surrounded by some plants. Um, so this is just what I talked about. Whatever makes you feel good. I mean, they're just reiterating that. You guys, too, like, <laughs> you know, what is your self-love routine? And that's part of pulling in the divine feminine. Um, many men do not even know how to slow down. <laughs> and, and hopefully, as you're more on your spiritual path and your, and your journey, you're learning what it means to slow down and to take care of yourself. Um, and it may not be making a potion. I mean, maybe it's going to the gym more or going out more for a run or, um, you know, finding some time to do a hobby that you've put off doing for a while. Something that gets you outside in nature. Um, something really cool that maybe speaks to your, um, you know, something you did in a past life. I see so many of these um, vlogs coming up now. You know, what is it? The bushcrafting and all that kind of stuff. Like getting outdoors and doing stuff you did as a kid. Like for you guys out there, like... You know, building a clubhouse, like, I don't know, building a clubhouse, going on an overnight trek. Um, Adventure Archives is like my one of my most favorite YouTube channels. And I love them so much because they're like four guys who are friends and they've been friends since they were kids. And they go on these hikes all like all over the world. They do hikes and they do like a, you know, a video about what they did. And, you know, they're camping and they're hiking and all of that. So it's just some ideas for the masculine, even for the feminine. Like, I wish I could, <laughs> I, can, I can do little hikes, but they do like, we're going to do 22 miles. I'm like, oh no, I don't think I can do that. But um, I live vicariously through some of their hikes. Um, so those are just some ideas because Avalon too is all about being outdoors. I mean, the orchard, someone showed the apple orchards of Glastonbury the other day on a picture and I was like, oh, boohoo. I started crying about my love, my past life and the orchards up in Avalon. So practice self-love is the message for the feminine part of us for this month of February. And so I'm going to finish this with a light language healing. Um, this is just to bring that feminine into balance, open you more up to your power and your light, and to help you integrate your shadow self um, a little more easily so it doesn't have to um, take you off kilter so much and throw you off balance so much. When, when something shadow comes in to kind of tip the scales, um, that you're better able to bounce back from that, that you're better able to say like, oh yeah, wait, I know, um, I need to, I need to, I need to, um, like understand this is shadow. It's coming up. I'm supposed to learn from it, like acknowledge it. Don't suppress it. Don't push it down. And then, you know, ask for help to release it. Just release it to the earth or ask your angels or your guides to come take it from you. And then right away, try to rebalance with like, okay, what can I, what is some self-love thing I can do or something I can do to help me bring my power back again? So I'm going to be doing some dragon. Oh, I haven't done dragon light language in a while. I'm going to be doing some dragon, earth dragon light language. Oh, to help you root into this new part of yourself that's coming up to be um, worked with and recognized. This um, 
you know, this I've had the power all along part of yourself. So we want to pull that in from from your um, ancient files, from your Akash. You are a warrior spirit. Where is that warrior spirit within you? Like, let's let's use the earth dragons to help pull that out. Bring that to the forefront and root it down. So if you want to receive this healing, this light language healing, then all you have to do is acknowledge, you know, mentally or verbally that you accept this healing because everyone may not want it. But if you're here and you say accept it, you're going to get it. <laughs> you're going to receive it. Okay, so I don't need that to be a surprise. Um, it's very powerful. You want to drink a lot of water afterwards. And there's usually a 24 to 48 hour integration period as things shift within and around you. As this light language kind of works its magic within and without. Um, and things start to shift for you. Let's take a deep breath. And it would be also helpful if you're up and about listening to me that to receive this light language, you're either sitting down or lying down or you're stopped somewhere um, that you're not driving your car or whatever. I'm going to take a drink of water and then I'm going to start. Earth Dragon. just unpacked a huge treasure chest there <laughs> so I'm interested to see what that means for each of you and this is where we're going to close out our episode like I said take it easy drink some water allow those things to come up for you what is your power what is your purpose how can you better bring in some self-love and self-care what are some things from your Akash that relate now to your soul purpose and your soul mission you could start receiving visions of those you could start seeing something that pertains to those things come up in your feeds and your social media um, if you can get outside in nature, please get outside in nature, but you could see spirit animals that are delivering messages to you. Today we've worked with the stag and the owl. So if you resonate with those, you might check in with what those mean for you. Always, as always, I wish you blessings on your journey. If you want to work more with Merlin and Avalon, then you just need to invite him in. But remember, when he calls, he calls and he, he expects you to come. So he expects you to follow. So especially if you're doing earth work with him. So just be aware of that. Um, and if you need to contact the show about anything that's come up in today's podcast, some, some of these podcast places, there's places to put comments, but the really my Instagram and the show email are the best ways to get in touch with the show. I want to thank you all so much for joining me here. We will see you again in the next podcast episode. Take care. Thank you for listening to this podcast. It has been brought to you by the Bringers of the Light, an etheric group of higher light beings focused on service to Gaia, humanity, and the self 
as it pertains to the spiritual journey. So they are here to support you on your path to love and to working with others. Thank you so much for joining us. Take care.